All right, so the first commercial painting by GPT. Now we're really starting to take up the dials, right? Um, so now we know that we can use natural language to talk to it. Now we know we can inject a sense of intelligence into the render. But as creative professionals, and maybe just me, I have to have some sort of level of control in order to stay on brand, in order to have commercial design. Because it can't just be the Wild West. Mid Journey's fantastic, but you cannot rein it in for commercial design, right? It's, but by the way, that was Mid Journey that did that shot. So, we want to have the ability to manipulate color palettes, okay? We want to be able to take what we do and change a color palette. We also want non-destructive layer control inside of this painting. There's actually going to be layers. We want to be able to use image prompts. So any image coming in and every frame that's being written, we want to be able to use in a future iteration. And then most importantly, you want your design token security because all of the past and how we've gotten here today are these scrapings that go on on everybody's public, you know, all the images that are out there and all the code bases that they're out here. That's how these things came here. So you should be aware to be in systems that are going to lock in what your proprietary stuff is so that you can monetize and protect your IP. That is extremely important. All right, getting on to the fun stuff. Um, GPT 3.5 versus 4. So if you haven't already, I would highly recommend you sign up for the paid service of GPT. It, trust me, it is like the cheapest thing based upon what you're gonna get, you're ever gonna see. Do not be fooled by GPT-4 being creative. It is creative, they're both creative. The way I look at this is like you have a drummer and a bass player, they're both awesome. Um, you might wanna bounce back and forth between both. They have personalities and getting to know that is important because sometimes one tool is better than the other. But let's start to look in detail of how we, um, how GPT-3 versus 4 thinks. So, this is a simple prompt. We just want to draw a splotch of paint. Just draw a splotch of paint. So, 3.5 gives you this ellipse circle, and you're like, what? And so it's like, yeah, curious, it's just an ellipse, what's going on there? But when you go into four, it elaborates on the thought process and like sends off into this loop. Yeah, a, a splotch of paint is this thing that actually is repeated and you get this, okay? So looking at this, you start to understand how it thinks. And so for me, this was a moment of, oh yeah, that's right. It's almost like spray paint. If you think of a can of spray paint that you hit, it's like the particles are coming out, right? And it's looping. So what do we need to do? Well, let's give it a brush. So I took a brush from Steve's Makerspace. We're gonna see that in a minute. This guy's phenomenal at, at making these brushes. And um, this was a super fun moment for me. Um, so now we're just going to tell GPT to draw something with a brush. And I mean anything. It's just say, hey, draw something. So take a moment and just think about what do you think it's going to draw, right? So it draws a circle, a perfect circle. And yeah, it's going off the edge of the canvas because it's not fully understanding the brush size yet. By the way, look at that brush. I'm hoping that's coming through. Steve Makerspace is excellent in making these brushes. Um, but now, look at, we can control the color of it. So now we're starting to inject, hey, we can now take it, bring it into a palette. We can start to work with this, right? And so then, yeah, let's see how far we can take this thing. So we're bringing in an image prompt. This is coming out of mid journey, okay? Because I, you know, we have to have, I'm, I'm about commercial control. So I'm not blue sky, right? So, and by the way, if you're scrambling to look at that code on the left, don't worry, this is all up and live as of today. So if you register in Optica today, by the way, if you pull this up on your phone right now, you're gonna see this working on your phone, okay? So we hit play here and, um, and all this amazing stuff starts happening, especially from a creative perspective. Like you can spend all day on this. It's already bringing in the subject. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but it's a, it's a, it's a gentleman looking over his shoulder 
and, uh, and there's layers in it. So there's some transparency going on for that element of control that actually becomes very vital. There will be a video coming out on YouTube that kind of explains how this was done. Um, a great deal of this was actually mistakes. There are tons of happy mistakes that occur in code that actually, it's crazy, sorry. I'm usually in tech and in tech, there is no, there's a bug. If the code doesn't work, it's a bug. In this world, you might have a bug that actually produces the greatest creative thing you've ever seen, right? I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. So there are tons of examples, what we call happy accidents. So if you subscribe to the channel, I'm telling you, you're gonna see some stuff that is, uh, that is uh, fun with bugs. Um, another quick word of advice, um, uh, Pay attention to how you're feeding information into it. So if you look at that, that shot on the far left, you're gonna notice these strokes that are long in the background versus tight over the top. Um, those are things that are explained. That was a, a mistake. That whole thing, which is actually to me the more accurate painting, or I should say more accurate, the more creative expressive painting are the, the long strokes versus the short strokes over the subject. That was a complete accident. So don't try to over control what you're doing. All right, wrapping up. Um, special thanks. Um, Daniel Schiffman of The Coding Train. Um, he is a, uh, uh, the, co uh, the creative coding god. <laughs> he owns this space. And then on the far right, we've got Steve's Makerspace. So the guy is phenomenal at doing textures for art. So if you're really into art and, uh, and want to dial up some great uh, uh, brush strokes, then that's your guy. In the middle, Traversy Media, Brad, um, he does phenomenal crash courses on some text, so if you feel like you want to brush up on some basic JavaScript, he really breaks it down and gets you, and it's worth the investment to do that. So again, getting started, Optica with two Ks, do not wait because you will get waitlisted. Select your prompt and then start producing. So there you have it. We'll take questions now. Thank you. Dude, <laughs> that was a lot. Oh my God, I feel so far behind. <laughs>